I'm about to go in on this today. I apologize in advance if I raise my voice at some point. I'm going to try not to. I promise I'm not mad about this. Sometimes when I raise my voice on here, some of you guys think I'm pissed off or upset about something. I'm not upset about what we're talking about today. I've waited a couple of days to get to this topic because I wanted the final ratings number to come out for Game 6 of the NBA Finals before I even spoke about this. I didn't want to talk about preliminary numbers. I told you guys last week that the elimination game had the potential and likely would be the lowest rated finals elimination game in NBA history and possibly the lowest rated finals game period in NBA history. Now I had my doubts when I I said that. There was a thought in the back of my mind that maybe, just maybe, some of you guys that turned off the NBA would want to see LeBron James win his fourth title. I thought maybe the curiosity factor would be there, that people would want to see the commentary, at least, from LeBron and the Lakers after they won the championship, the post-game celebration. I thought maybe one, two million people who had been turned off by the NBA this summer, by all the political propaganda, I thought maybe they would come back for one last game to see LeBron win his championship, maybe to see Anthony Davis win his first title. I mean, the game was on Sunday night. People are usually home on Sunday night getting ready for the work week. The game started earlier than they usually do. I believe it tipped off about 7.30 Eastern time. Now, sure, the NBA had the NFL to deal with, but I'm tired of hearing that excuse. Adam Silver in the front office of the NBA knew that the NFL would be in the middle of their regular season when they scheduled these playoff games, these NBA Finals games. So the NFL playing in October isn't an excuse for a 70% drop in the ratings. Game six of the NBA Finals. You've got LeBron James, the biggest superstar in all sports. He's playing for the Lakers the most popular franchise in the NBA. Millennials love LeBron James, supposedly. He was going to be crowned champion for the fourth time in his career, cementing his status as an NBA legend. Now, surely, this was going to be the game that broke the trend of declining ratings and draw a decent number. I mean, right? (laughs) If you thought that, if anyone thought that, It was wishful thinking. Game six, Sunday night, drew 5.6 million viewers. LeBron James, winning his fourth title, went over about as popular as a fart in church. That number is less than shows like America's Got Talent Draw, Big Brother. And it was significantly less than the NFL game Sunday night between the Vikings and the Seahawks. This year's NBA Finals was by far the lowest rated finals in the history of the league. And it's not even close. Game 6 last year, Raptors Warriors, drew 18.3 million viewers. In one year, Goat James, as Shannon Sharp likes to call him, LeBron James has managed to push away 70% of the audience. And let's get to this ridiculous Goat James conversation that I keep hearing about on Fox Sports 1. Nick Wright, biggest square in America, leader of the millennial sports woke movement, the guy swinging from LeBron's junk every morning on Fox Sports 1, screaming into his megaphone to anyone that'll listen that LeBron James is the greatest player in NBA history. Nick Wright says that LeBron James... Is better than Michael Jordan. Now, he's not alone in this assessment. His woke brother, Shannon Sharp, he's right there along with him. Nick Wright claims LeBron James is better than Jordan. And I couldn't believe this when he said it. But he claims LeBron is better than Jordan because Michael Jordan was 1-9 in the playoffs without Scottie Pippen. That's his sole reason. Well, LeBron is 4-6 in the NBA Finals. Michael Jordan, 6-0. LeBron James was swept in the 2007 NBA Finals. LeBron James has choked in the playoffs on multiple occasions. 
2009 Eastern Conference Finals, dominated by Dwight Howard and the Orlando Magic. Next year, Eastern Conference Semifinals. Remember him pouting, walking off the court in Boston after the Celtics dominated him? Then, the biggest collapse of his career, a complete choke, the 2011 NBA Finals against the Dallas Mavericks. LeBron James has Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, going up against Dirk Nowitzki. Game four of that series, which really decided the whole thing. LeBron James scores eight points. Eight points. He had a negative net rating in games four, five, and six of that series. It was the biggest collapse in the history of the NBA when we're talking about a legendary player of LeBron's caliber. I don't ever remember Michael Jordan folding under pressure like LeBron James. I don't ever remember Michael Jordan having a playoff collapse of that magnitude. I don't remember Jordan ever being questioned about his commitment to the game of basketball or ever being questioned about his willingness to take the last second shot in the playoffs. The Detroit Pistons, they devised the Jordan rules just to stop Michael Jordan. Hell, Sam Smith wrote a book about it. Michael Jordan was universally respected by the fans and the media. After winning the title the other night, LeBron James said that he wanted his damn respect. Now, why is he saying that? Why is LeBron James not respected? Why is he so polarizing? And this isn't something that's new, something that has just come about recently. LeBron James has been questioned and not respected his entire career. Why? Maybe because before he won anything at the NBA level, he was calling himself King James. King of the league. King of what? I don't know. You know what Michael Jordan called himself? Mike. Nothing. He never gave himself a nickname because... Players of Michael Jordan's caliber, they don't have to do that. They let the media or the fans do it, or in Jordan's case, Nike. I think part of the reason that LeBron James mentioned respect the other night is because his name and his legacy has been tarnished the last three months. Because he has led the NBA down the path of politics and social justice. The reason I say that is because of what he said after saying he wanted his respect. He backtracked a little bit on this whole social justice narrative. LeBron James said that he loved America. He loved his country. And he wanted America to be great. Which kind of shocked me. Considering the NBA has spent the last three months telling America how racist we are. And how we need systemic change. It's also ironic. The NBA calling America a racist country considering the fact that the NBA signed a television deal with China in August that's worth $1.5 billion. And the Chinese government is committing actual racist acts on a daily basis, rounding up minorities into re-education camps. But anytime anyone associated with the NBA is asked about their business dealings with China, it's always a deflection. Mark Cuban is the perfect example. Mark Cuban is a guy that I used to have a lot of respect for. If he ran for president, I probably would have voted for him a year ago. That is no longer the case. Because just like everyone else in the NBA, Mark Cuban has sold his soul to China in the far left. He was on Megyn Kelly's podcast or her radio show or whatever it is. I didn't even know she had one. But one thing about Megyn Kelly, she is not going to let you dodge a question. She repeatedly asked Mark Cuban about the NBA's stance on racial politics in America, social justice, and why they thought it was okay to do business with China, considering, you know, the fact, the whole re-education camp thing. Mark Cuban dodged and dodged and dodged her question until he finally just admitted that he had no problem doing business with China because it was just business. Then he took a page from the media's handbook and defended the low ratings in the NBA Finals. Both you and I, we know why the NBA playoffs ratings have tanked. 
But listen to Mark Cuban's reasoning. He said the ratings were low because they didn't have the matchups and the storylines. And they didn't do a good job of promoting it. That was the problem. Mark Cuban said the low ratings had nothing to do with politics. I mean, that's just crazy talk. Really? For one, the NBA promoted the hell out of their playoffs. You couldn't watch a TV show or a YouTube video without seeing an NBA commercial. And two, if social justice politics weren't the cause of the tanking NBA ratings, then why did Adam Silver come out and admit the infusion of politics has been wildly unpopular and say that they're going to do away with the Black Lives Matter on the court? They're going to do away with the social justice messages next season. Why would he say that if that's not the reason for the ratings tanking? You think the NBA would be doing all of that if the ratings were going up or if they were the same or if they were just down 5%? No. They're doing it because no one is watching the NBA right now. Now the media is blaming the presidential election for the low ratings in the NBA. Because, you know, the media likes to cover things up for the NBA lately. This is their newest excuse. After blaming the NFL didn't work, or the playoffs taking place in September and October, that excuse didn't work, or coronavirus, that didn't work, or the racial tensions in the country, that didn't work. After none of those excuses worked, now the media has decided it's the presidential election that's at fault for the NBA's low ratings. Now, of course, you're not going to hear any of these excuses on ESPN or Fox Sports 1. Captain Woke, Stephen A. Smith, Private First Class SJW Skip Bayless, their bosses aren't going to let them mention the sagging NBA ratings. But this newest excuse for people not watching the NBA, the presidential election, we just had a presidential election four years ago. That year, the finals averaged 23.18 million viewers per game. Game seven of that series topped out at 31 million people. LeBron James was in that series. So you're telling me, if you believe the media, you're telling me that 20 to 25 million people didn't watch the NBA Finals this year because they were too caught up in the presidential election. Get the hell out of here. People are not watching the NBA because they are tired of LeBron James and the rest of the league preaching to them about social justice and racial politics. They are tired of being preached to by black millionaires about how unfair and racist America is. We are so oppressed, the police are against us. Please, if being oppressed pays millions of dollars a year, oppress me. Sign me up to be oppressed. Adam Silver and LeBron James and the rest of the woke media they were the last to realize that what they were doing with all their wokeness was killing the NBA. And now the league is dead. It is dead. Can it be revived? I don't see it happening anytime soon. It is going to take the NBA years to rebuild their credibility with the American public. The ratings for the regular season and the early rounds of the playoffs, they have been declining the past three or four years already. The more socially conscious LeBron James became, the more the ratings declined. Once he decided to go full woke this past summer, the bottom fell out of the NBA ratings. Now, he is going to leave it to guys like Zion Williamson, John ja Morant, Steph Curry. You get my point. He's going to leave it to those guys to clean up the public relations problem that LeBron James has created. Because I don't think the NBA is going to begin recovering until LeBron retires. And that's still going to be a couple of years away. I was talking about the GOAT conversation earlier between Michael Jordan and LeBron. This is another reason that Michael Jordan is the GOAT. And LeBron James is not even in the conversation. Michael Jordan propelled the NBA to heights that it had never seen before. Michael Jordan was an event. When he played, it was an event. Back in 1998, the Chicago Bulls, they were in Atlanta, take on the Hawks. They had to move that game to the Georgia Dome because the demand for tickets was so high. Michael Jordan drew 60,000, 70,000 people to the Georgia Dome 
for a regular season game in February or March. When Jordan retired from the NBA, the league was at the top of the mountain. The second most popular sports league in America, which is all you can really ask for because no league is topping the NFL. LeBron James has taken that same league and drove it straight into the ground. No one is talking about the NBA right now. The NBA Finals drew zero interest. The league is as unpopular as it has ever been. When LeBron James retires, where will the NBA be? All right, that's all for today. Hit that like and subscribe button. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Leave me a comment in the section below. Convince me that LeBron James is the GOAT. Convince me that he is better than Michael Jordan. More importantly, how long is it going to take the NBA to recover from the damage that LeBron James has inflicted onto the league this past summer? Or will they ever recover? Let me know your thoughts. You can follow me on Twitter at casing underscore BTL84. If you have any questions, a topic you'd like me to discuss, you can email me at btlkc84 at gmail.com. I'll see you guys next time.